And uh, yes, we are live. Okay, um, thanks for joining me. Good afternoon, welcome to my afternoon broadcast. This is a Facebook Live, and I'll tell you about that in a moment, as well as everything else I'm going to tell you. Um, this is episode number 690. So the countdown to 700 has begun. And the topic today is um, we expect them to like we expect them to like us. However, it's not up to them. So I'm going to explain that one and, and break it apart, and also give you some tips and hints and ideas. So before I jump into the topic, let me introduce myself and explain why I do these every day, and then we'll get into it. My name is Barry Selby, hope you haven't, in case you haven't seen me before. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I help women create balance in love, life, and business because that's what I'd love to do. I'm also um, passionate in my daily talks on Facebook Live, which is the, these talks called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Um, that's now abbreviated down to MFTM to make more room for the content of the title because our title's got longer and longer. Um, and I'm doing these now for over two years. So we're now up to episode 690. It's getting quite a few now. Um, the topic again today is we expect them to like us. However, it's not up to them, which sounds very obvious if you, listen, if you read that the way it reads. But I want to give you some keys as well, not just to go, oh, of course, it's not about them. It's about me. I'll take care of it. It's fine. Easier said than done. So let me break into the, to break this down. I'm also going to put a couple of links in the comments, which are offers and invitations. So um, yes, offers and invitations. Making sure I'm straight ahead. I'm, I'm in the middle of creating something that's not ready yet. So I'll put something else in there instead. So let's um, roll up our sleeves and get into the topic at hand. We, as people, because <laughs> I presume it's only people watching my video, because. Excuse me. <coughs> mm. That rib still hurts when I cough, so I'm attempting to get through this without wincing too much. So, we as people, which again, I believe most of you watching this are, most of the people, yeah, um, are generally externally referenced, meaning that we're inspired. Um, responding and reacting to things that happen out there. That's the way life is for most people. In fact, a lot of people are driven by a reactive way of living. In fact, you know people like this, I'm sure, who are so caught up in the way that they did they did it to us, or they did it to me, or whatever that framing is, that nothing seems to be working right in their lives. In fact, oftentimes, things aren't working right in people's lives, and they take on the assumption or the blame of other people being responsible for their upset. It doesn't have to be that way, and likely nine times out of 10, it isn't that way, but they just make that up. So this is for them, not for you. So, because you're above this, you know this stuff. So feel free to share this with them if you feel like it, because I'm sure you are totally fine with all this content. Just a little bit facetious. <laughs> but this is the way that things happen in our lives. We are, um, well, let's, let's, do, let's do a spectrum, a scale, a reference point. On the range of being upset by other people, some people live in the extreme place where everything that happens out there is causing their upset. So they're not responsible, they're not autonomous, they're not accountable. They just think everything out there caused their problems and it's their fault, not mine. That's one way of putting it, it's an extreme case. On the other end, the extreme, still within the same spectrum, because I'm going to go outside that in a moment, is where everything works fine. I am able to interact with other people. I'm comfortable, confident and comfortable with that. People don't trigger me, except for that one thing. Now that one thing might be your partner who says something, does something that triggers you and you get upset with them. Or somebody keys your car. I've had that happen before. That was very triggering, just to be honest. Oh yeah, I remember that car. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no distraction for the moment. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's the spectrum. The spectrum basically is from Everything upsets me to one thing upsets me. I'm inviting you to get off the spectrum entirely, which I'll get to in a moment. But I want to give you some thoughts about what it is you may be buying into, because as I said, for some people, everything around the world upsets them. If you are emotionally disturbed, emotionally triggered, emotionally upset by something somebody else does, whether it's somebody close, personal, relationship, family, stuff like that, whether it's further out, a boss, or a friend, neighbor type thing, or it's way further out, which is something on the news that upsets you and you get really bent out of shape. 
hey Adriana, nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, so it's, there's a range of those things, but whichever range you have, when you, whichever place you're at, if it's up close, personal, or way out in the distance, if you're getting upset by those things, you're letting those things upset you more accurately, then you're putting yourself at the mercy of what that is, or who that is, or what they do, or what they say. I've said this a few times, and I want to make sure this point gets home, because so many people still run this racket, and it is a racket to quote a different training methodology, but they're running this belief that it's because of other people I should be upset, that it's not me, it's them. Because there's certain righteousness, there's a certain superiority, false as it is, to think that we're above them, so it's their fault that I'm upset. It's an illusion, though. When you are putting somebody else at the cause of your upset, you actually put them on the pedestal by giving them the power over your, your feelings. I'll say that one again. When you get upset for somebody else, you're giving them power over your feelings, which means you raise them above you. Not only that, but you give them control of your feelings. Yes, you give them the reins to control your feelings and you have no control anymore because they're upsetting you when they feel like it. I'm, I'm making this blunt to make sure you get the point. I talked about this has become a big topic recently in my conversation, so I may be I am reiterating some things I said over the last few days because this is really fundamental. In every relationship you have, near and far, when you're unable to maintain your own centeredness without effort. Because when they do something or say something or don't say something or don't do something, you get upset. That's a place where you are actually falling into a role of victim, being a puppet on the strings of their control. I think I made this simple enough. But the reality also is, is you give away your power. And for many people out there, they're living in a very disempowered life because they keep thinking it's somebody else's responsibility to fix it, to make it good, or to stop hurting them, or whatever that range is. Again, the spectrum of upset and the spectrum of um, irresponsibility is out there and you may find yourself somewhere on that scale probably closer to the end I would guess of the minimal where it's only one thing that upsets you versus all the other end where everything upsets you there's a range of people fall on if you really are happy with that great wonderful hope you enjoy yourself I'm not really being enthusiastic about it because I don't think anybody should be happy with that but I do know people who play victim and not only they're playing victim, but by blaming other people and being letting other people control their feelings, they're being a victim. It's not just playing at it, they're being at it full on. I almost wish I could shake him by the shoulders and say, no, you don't have to do that. You can take control of your own life. You can take management of your own life and responsibility in a way that works. And this is the thing, the way off of that spectrum completely, sorry, um, that way, <laughs> which Ranger is doing it. The way off of that spectrum completely to get out of the upset spectrum is to learn how to be self um, generative is a word I would use. But I, I use the word self centered because it's actually accurate. You know, people go, what do you mean self centered and selfish? No, I don't mean that. I'm putting myself as, a, in, as the terms as the big S. Because the big S in the bigger self is the consciousness, it's the beingness, it's your higher self, so to speak. So when you understand that when you become self generated from the high self, from the aware self, you no longer react, you learn how to respond. And the difference between reaction and response is a massive scale. And so many people I know are unaware they have this choice. As I said, they're on the spectrum of upset from one to many, where they are in the place where everything can trigger them. And again, there's a certain sense of, a false sense, excuse me, of superiority or of um, empowerment because they feel like they're have righteously and righteousness too and indignantly upset because something happened it's not true because when you let something else upset you you're not in control anymore you gave them gave that thing that person that experience the power over you and that's a victim role as i've said already in this talk so again the way to get off of that spectrum completely the way to get off of that merry-go-round so to speak is to learn how to to source yourself inside to center yourself in yourself to actually be in a place where you're, sorry, just a flashback on something you just said then. The reverse of deja vu, that was vu jade. <laughs> um, the recognition is that when you go, when you get to that place of centeredness, you actually get to a place where you don't necessarily have to respond at all. And it's not a place of like controlling yourself and holding back, you don't want to say anything you shouldn't say. It's about you just don't choose to. It's easy. 
And the thing about this is interesting is that when you're in a place of reaction, it's easier in the sense that you don't have any control, but it's a lot less, it's a lot more challenging because you don't know how to manage it. When you learn how to be self-generated, and they say it's self-centered, but centered in yourself, and let me put it that way, because it's more way of saying it, then it's actually even easier still because then you have more fluidity because you're actually no longer struck, um, con constrained and stuck in this place of reactiveness to everything around you because people tend to get that way. What you end up being is more fluid and more in flow, which is much more relaxed, more even keeled, and you're able to basically look at something and go, hmm, that's interesting. Now you can be invested, so you may have a certain attachment to certain things happening a certain way, but it doesn't upset you because the whole thing is you're not driven by it anymore. This dance in relationships, this dance in business, this dance in life is one that many people are doing wrong. Yes, I'm using the term wrong because they're allowing life to control them, the way they have the relationship to control them, the way they're, they're allowing business to control them. When you learn how to basically be in charge of yourself, to honor, respect, and appreciate yourself, then you're actually in a place where everything out there is actually at your beck and call so to speak. You choose what you choose to interact with. You have freedom to decide what lines up, what doesn't work, what does work. This is, I would say fundamental, I keep using the term fundamental, but it's true. The way to live life successfully, the way to be autonomous in your life, the way to have healthier relationships is to start from inside first. I was, I've, been, I've been writing um, the content, the copy for, for the new webpage for this course I'm gonna mention in the, in the moment. And I was writing it out and I just really got clear about how in the past six months, eight months of my coaching, I find myself more emphatically, as you can tell by my talks, focusing on self-care, self-support and self-empowerment to help people get better relationships. And there are many people out there doing relationship, co relationship coaching, dating coaching, empowerment, getting you to find relationships. And I've said so many times how it's all about the inside job. It's all about us. But what I've now realized more clearly after I wrote my self-love practice, which I launched about six months, five months ago, I've now realized there's a deeper level, which is now I've created this course called Coming Home to Yourself. Um, it's not public yet. <laughs> Just announced it this way and through word of mouth of friends. And those people who are interested, like, you know, message me and I'll give you a link at, at the end to find a way to reach and to get in touch to get more information. But the thing is that what I'm aware of is that every area of life it starts with you coming home to yourself first because when you're home when you're outside yourself, as I quote on the, as on the, on the page, you know, home is where the heart is, that is really true. Meaning that not so much um, home is where the heart is, but your heart is where the home is. Oh, that was a good one, flipped it. <laughs> but that's the recognition is that really when you come back to yourself, that's where you come home to yourself. Is you're really based in, and in support of who you really are and the empowerment of that and the freedom of that is beyond anything you've ever done before. There are many fix-it programs out there. We go do a course and a training to rewind your thinking. And I'm realizing what I'm offering now actually may be more powerful than that, although more accessible too. This passion has now created this new, um, my new course. It's a, it's a, a, a three-month course called, again, Coming Home to Yourself because I'm so passionate about people coming home to themselves. And it's really that understanding about when you learn to have your own dominion over your feelings, own dominion over your support, have a dominion over your own self, self care, your life will change. So if you're fed up being at the mercy of other people's actions, inactions, words, or silences, this is something you need. You'll want. <laughs> I was gonna say you need, because that's a bit hard word. So I'm gonna put links in the comments for you to check out two things. One is gonna be um, a contact form to reach out to me if you're interested in this coming home to yourself so you find out more information I'll give us in an email directly the second thing is my self-love guided meditation because if you're starting anywhere and you want to learn how to function from inside first again heart is where the home is that's the that's a better way of saying it then the self-love practice will get you started I'm hoping this is making some sense because for some people watching this it's like oh wow I understand now it's, it's shifting from out there to in here and shifting from up here to down here as well by the way so it's, it's a the shift inward and the shift downward, so to speak. But people are getting this, and I'm really grateful for that because the more that I can wake people up, the more my work is fulfilling, and the more that people out there are living a much more fulfilled, whole, and centered way of living life. And I'm all about that. 
So I hope this has made some sense to you. Um, this is a, it's another fourth in a series now. I've been, I've been talking about this quite a bit in case you had not wondered in different angles, different perspectives, because I'm really looking at what is the true underlying core of how we get caught up in our, um, triggering experience of life outside. And when you learn how to have the power inside, those triggers get disarmed. I'm getting better at these analogies. <laughs> so this makes some sense to you. And if you have any questions, thoughts or comments about this, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. Um, this is a reminder. This is an encouragement. This is an, this is an invitation to take dominion of your own life. Whether you do choose to check out my program, which I do invite you to check out because I'm selfish and biased. <laughs> Self-centered, that is, to help support myself and you. Um, or whether you do it yourself. I'm inviting you to at least take a look at your life and see where perhaps you are more reactive to things out there and more trigger happy with what happens out there when you prefer to be something else. And when you prefer to be something else, I have some skills, tools, and a new course to help you get more out of it, out of that place of reactive, reactivity, reactivity and more to a place of heart-centered control of your life. So I thank you for watching. Um, this, by the way, is my Facebook Live. I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on Facebook. Um, the link to that is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby author. And there's also a replay on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to the channel. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Fundamentally, fundamentally, when you learn how to have dominion over your life and really live in your heart from a really powerful place, everything outside becomes an experience you can enjoy, participate in, participate in when you choose to, and have ownership of your own feelings so that you become autonomous, victorious, and at, and at that's what I'm for, at a point of inspiration. So I hope this made some sense to you. I appreciate you being with me as always, and please take this to heart, it will help you. And again, I'll put the links in the comments for you to check out. Thanks for being with me. I will see you again tomorrow for another little broadcast. We'll see what it's going to be like. That'll be number four for 691. Interesting topics come up all the time. And uh, I thank you for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.